The volume all the way up. If you all can hear that, please give me a thumbs up. Shout out to Eli. Thank you so much for becoming a member. And help support the channel. We appreciate you so much. All right, here we go. Hefe, please, patience. <laughs> we got started now. Thank you. Oh, not good. Love how he's just in the center of the shot here. As he MJ says, I'm gonna love the cinematography. <laughs> I do. Music, brilliant. fully understand how dangerous it is for a woman to give birth it's it's life-threatening and sometimes we treat it so casually shout out to all the moms out there So I take it he lost his ability to walk. Thank you so much for becoming a member. Appreciate that so much. Oh, the music is so beautiful. Boom. Wow. Hey, yo, relax. Oh, the music is brilliant. Look at that. The facial expressions, the music to go along with it.
Beautiful transitions. Wow. Thank you simply Sutu for becoming a member. Oh man, that music made me emotional. Storytelling. Do they have a soundtrack? I need this soundtrack. What's going on? The water's flowing? Beautiful. This is so beautiful. Wow. This is so heartbreaking. <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, the music's not helping. <laughs> Sounds like a journey. This is a story of a journey. I have no idea where this is going. Okay. Oh, there's supposed to be healing waters. All right, Familia, clap with me. Thank you all so much for becoming members. Thank you, a queen, for the super chat. Thank you, Sister Carol Ann, for the super chat. Thank you for the information about the pool. To become a member, all you need to do is hit that join button that's in the lower side of the screen here. It says join. You go over to my page. There's a membership tab on top of the page. You click there and become a member there. Can help support this channel for as low as a dollar ninety nine. That's about a cost of one taco a month. You can support this channel. Any help would be greatly appreciated, but not necessary. So don't feel obligated to. I understand times are tough. If all you can do is click that like button. That'd be good enough. It tells YouTube that this this channel is important and it spreads the word to more people. So. 
Beautiful. Here we go. Let's go. Oh, pause it real quickly because yes, uh, Matt, you mentioned this. So it's a, it's really amazing. Yes, it really is amazing that so much can be said without using words. Um, the storytelling and, and so much can be told also in the transitions of how they switch from one situation to another situation. And they show that this kid fell. He couldn't walk. He joined some kind of a group, right? And uh, they taught him everything, how to defend themselves. Um, and they were waiting, I guess, for or the brother probably joined. I'm not, I'm not sure I followed that correctly because I was so entranced by the music. But uh, he was looking for healing. And so healing hasn't come. Right? Is that is that sort of <laughs> sort of the gist of it? I'm gonna have to get in contact with uh, with Dallas here and see if there is a if there is a soundtrack to this, like a CD we could buy or something or download, because this music was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Oh, the brother, the younger brother joined the group. Yeah. Okay. Not excuse me. Move. <laughs> Last time we have the same problem. I ask you for eight. Take this back and you bring me eight like I asked. No, eight. Oh, that burned quick. No, Lord, but God. Okay. You ruined one of my cards. It did get his attention, Rabbi. You're very resourceful, Simon. That's it for today, Zalats. Come on, Simon, let's eat. Okay, what are Zealots? Murder training. Murder training. Okay, got it. Neil Subtle. <laughs> See any real soon, Simon. It's kind of sus. <laughs> he is as inventive as he is dedicated. As kids would say to I have overseen Simon's training for the last three years. He has never failed me. Now, he has never had an assignment like this before. A Roman magistrate on the streets of Jerusalem. But he will have at least two escorts. Every breath this Roman takes is tough. Every garment he deigns for this so called high priest, stained. Caiaphas has resisted. His resistance is a show. <laughs> the Romans, however, do not know that. The magistrate's mysterious death will cast suspicion upon Caiaphas, resulting in his arrest. Simon is up to the task. Okay. Send him to me. Yeah, I've never been to Jerusalem. Really? How is that possible? My father never took me and my mother to the feasts. This is your first feast of the Tabernacles? Uh, no, this is just my first time in Jerusalem. The tabernacle is a, a temporary dwelling. It's a tent. <laughs> I know what the Tabernacle is. So what? Do we have to build one to eat? <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> He's being facetious. God said to live in a booth for seven days during this feast. To commemorate how the children of Israel lived in temporary shelters for 40 years in the desert. Mm. Still are. One of three pilgrimage holidays where every able-bodied Israelite male who traveled to Jerusalem can present himself before Adonai. You really don't know about any of this stuff. I've already admitted that I don't know all of it. <laughs> I didn't pay much attention. I do recall my father used to leave three times a year. Why is it only the men are required to go? It can be a perilous journey. Difficult for children and the sick, people who need caretakers, but it doesn't prohibit anyone. Mm. I've taken Eden many times. Ah! Sharp. All right, I need some bodies to go into town with me. Nathaniel gave me a list of supplies for this masterpiece of his. Mm, pick me. Pick me, Simon. Pick me. Can we stop doing that? 
<laughs> Enter. Please. To whom do you serve? Al Shaddai, God of power and might, God of war. What is your name? Simon, son of Zebulon, son of Akiva of Ashkelona. For what were you born? To cleanse Israel of her enemies, to expel all non-Jews from Jerusalem, as the scriptures demand. Which scriptures? From the scroll of Moses, Shemot. Whoever sacrifices to any God other than the Lord alone, shall be devoted to destruction. You will travel to Jerusalem for the Feast of Tabernacles. With the order? Two days prior. You will leave first thing in the morning. In Jerusalem, you will assassinate an enemy of God. The Roman magistrate, Rufus. You will be met by your brother in the city. M my brother? A Jerusalem zealot and his team. They have been tracking Rufus. Once you are briefed on the Romans' movements, you will lead the team. Yes, master. Mm. Carry out your orders, Simon of Zebulon, or never return. Murdering for God, okay. Fear not, O Zion. Let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will find you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for him. It doesn't matter, any kind of crate or, or ballad. A stone would work. A stone, Yanni. This is a public teaching. I picked this market specifically because it serves so many poor. They're hungry for the words of a teacher. And they're probably afraid of you. Afraid of what? It's the holy city. You're a Pharisee. Just relax. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who bestows good things upon the unworthy. The Virkat Hagumel. But that's the blessing for life-threatening situations. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first step to You'll be fine. following. And once you have, your message will have even greater weight in the temple. For both of us. Good luck. You're leaving? These people are hungry for the word. I'm hungry for breakfast. The Hatov Hamitev. Blessed are you, Lord, Lord our, our God, King of the universe, King of the universe, universe and who is good. good and does good. Wow. Just rush through a prayer, why don't you? Just say the words. That's that's basically it, right? Just say the words. Don't feel it. Don't don't ask for it. going to try anymore. You know, Jesse, if you don't have any hope, then why are you still here? Huh? Start 
cool. <sighs> Can you believe that guy is here? I saw him earlier. Who is that? That is a ghost of the Cohorte Urbani. Secret police? More like marshals. <laughs> Elite soldier investigators. I heard the captain call him Atticus. Don't stare. Never seen one before. Or you have, and you didn't know. <laughs> White shadow. Well, hello? What brings you to Jerusalem? Uh, the, the festival, the pilgrimage. You're a few days early. I have family here. In what district? Near the Antonia Fortress. Are you carrying weapons? No. You're free to go. No! No! What was his crime? Murder? What is your name, soldier? Linus Silnius, sir. Linus, I want you to take your next assignment very seriously. My next assignment, sir. The Antonia Fortress is not a residential area. It is a public forum. That man does not have family there. Do you understand? Axius, send Linus Silnius home and take over this checkpoint. So you just oh, sent him home? I am so hungry. That's all I can do not to bite into this pomegranate. I was too. But the vendor had a stain on his tunic that looked like baby spit up. It made me yeah. nauseous. I know. I heard you tell him that. <laughs> you shouldn't eat right now. He it told him. Filthy. You really don't talk back, do you? I'm just being helpful. You want to impress Rema, right? What? You heard me. Deceptive visions. They have not exposed your iniquity to restore your fortunes, but have seen for you oracles that were false and misleading. I say to you, brothers and sisters, fellow children of Adonai, we must always be on guard against the false prophets among us, who use God's words, not to praise him, not to glorify him, but in the pursuit of their own power. Uh, it is what are you doing? Seduced. Often, we think of false this guy is so irritating to me. Makes sense. You're kind of the same person. <laughs> numbers and logic. Except he can't tell jokes. Guys! We should see what he wants. That Pharisee knows us. He does not approve. What do you mean? He used to live in Capernaum. He once yelled at our master. That guy? He called for his arrest at the house of Big James and John's father. We should go. Where? The meeting place is a block away. What are the odds? What are the odds he's actually doing? <laughs> you guys are both actually calculating the odds. <laughs> Just let them fight. The Pharisee doesn't know our faces. We see the others, we'll head them off. Hmm? Tomorrow night begins the Feast of Tabernacles. Over one million Jews are flooding into our city at this very moment from every corner of Israel. All to observe the feast, yes, but some may bring with them an agenda. Some false teachers may seize upon the large crowds to spread their heresies. You see what I mean, though, consider yourself to be devout, about Matthew and you? No Please don't speak. <laughs> they are not used against you. Okay, so pause because I need to just clarify something really quickly. So, the gentleman there, uh, the Pharisee, uh, Shimuel, Shem, Shimuel, Samuel, Samuel, um, he is there to warn people that there are false prophets who are using the word of God to spread their heresy, right? So, here's a man that is following the law word by word, right? letter by letter 
and he is making sure that the people he's or he wants to make sure that the people aren't lied to and that they should uh, see that the teachings that he's teaching are actually the actual word of God and is actually the actual teaching of God and to not be lied to by any other teachers, more or less, right? Okay. Sh Shumel. Okay, good. All right, cool. Just wanted to clarify that again. All right, gotcha. Are there Shumuels here in this time? That might be a question we might want to answer in the comments section below. Are there any Shumuel in today's world? Music is so beautiful. Got that drum. city. We've got a map of every street he walks, every spot he goes. We tracked his movements for two months. Near the end of every Shabbat, at the start of the first day, Motsi Shabbat, he goes to his favorite restaurant in the upper city, the Valerian. And there are no other patterns, no other places he goes consistently? To the Praetorium every day, of course, but it's heavily guarded on all sides. The restaurant is utterly exposed. He always has a guard, and on the off hours when he is with his wife, too. This Yamarishan tradition is a problem. If the streets are empty for Shabbat, it will be harder to create a diversion. It will be a challenge to get into position as Shabbat is ending. Roman is smart to choose Shabbat. Of course. Never underestimate the enemy. We... We have an ally with a shop on the square. We could store our weapons there and be ready as soon as Shabbat ends. Excellent. I need a cart with dry straw and three additional men. See to it. I'm sorry, I have a quick question. So the zealots, I heard him say that he was, uh, that he came in the name of, of a god, which was a god of war. Does that mean that they are something separate from, from say, like the Jewish people? like, Or is this just like uh, Jewish beliefs with political ties to it to, to sort of make it a Jewish nation or to enter politics into or to to implant someone religious into politics. I'm not 100% sure on that. So if, if anyone could answer that just briefly, some Jewish people were radical. Okay. Oh, so they're, okay. Take vengeance on the enemies. Okay. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because that, okay. I just wanted to make sure because that, that paints a bigger picture here of what they're doing and whose side, whose side they're on. Thank you. A fighting wing, gotcha. Thank you, Julie. Caleb, thank you for that.
beautiful little setup. With all due respect, Nathaniel, I know you're a skilled architect, but this thatch roof won't keep the rain out. That's the point. The vegetation provides shade from the sun during the day. And if a few raindrops get through, it is a reminder of our dependence on God, of his provision, and of how our people were so vulnerable in the wilderness. And he brought us through. Mm. There was a time in my life, in my old life, where I had to sleep outside. It is a good reminder of how I was delivered from that. This time of dwelling in booths is also a leveler of people. <laughs> Wealthy, poor, everyone sleeps outside. As equals. Well, let's be honest. Not wow. all booths are created equal. Yes, Nathaniel. The beauty of this booth is itself an act of worship. Wow. Rabbi. Hang on, I gotta process that really quickly. Okay. See, like, so here we have Matthew looking for safety and security. He's saying, like, but well, you know, I don't want to get wet when it when it when it rains. And they're saying, like, no, see, so the vegetation makes it so that we get shade when, in the hot sun. And if it happens to rain, a few drops will remind us that we're dependent fully on 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 God. That that uh, and then Jesus here says that we're all equals when it comes to staying in this in this tent. Whether you're so, I guess in this in this uh, festival everyone's required to live in a, in, in a tent and that brings everything down to an equal playing playing field right that the poor the even the rich live as if they were poor right for a few days or whatnot and someone pointed out that but not every tent is created equal right because not every tent is as good as their tent and so christ uh, here very beautifully points out that that yes the tent is sort of an act of worship right from the from the architect, so the, the designer is designing this as sort of like a beautiful act of, of worship. I love it. I absolutely love it. I have a question. Yes. In the prophet Zechariah, it is written, "And everyone who has survived of all the nations that have attacked Jerusalem shall go up year after year to worship the King, the Lord of Hosts, and to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles." Wait. What? Zechariah says that? They read that passage at the feast every year? You just don't pay attention. Well, there's a lot of readings. They sort of run together. What exactly <laughs> is the question, Big James? One day, our enemies will celebrate this feast with us? Babylonians, Assyrians, Romans. the Romans, Jews and Gentile at this table? What would have to happen for that to be possible? That's an excellent Something question. Have to change. That's an excellent question, Familia. See, this is what's beautiful. There's a there's there's this thing where we all know that unity and being united is really the key to our survival as human beings. Us getting along is the key to us surviving and for future generations to survive. If we continue dividing dividing ourselves and continue to argue and fight with one another over imaginary lines on the on the dirt, which are not imaginary anymore. Um, um, if we continue to argue w about that, that'll be our demise. That'll be the thing that'll cause us to 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 pretty much kill each other off, right? Um, but since we we know that being united is the key, but we can't see it because we we all think so differently, and we because you know one idea it's one idea versus another idea, it's one belief versus another belief, right? And to ask the question, what would need to happen in order for that to actually manifest or for it to actually take place what would need to what would need to happen what would need that that begins the process of us actually making it happen because now we're playing with questions that will solve that problem which is what would need to happen what would need to happen is that we need to sort of loosen our grip from from our ideas or our beliefs loosen loosen it up just a bit i'm not saying give it up or surrender to it but just loosen it up a little bit to where you can see that your enemy is you you're dependent on that enemy as much as that enemy is dependent on you, but you're fighting over things like uh, resources and, and, and territories and all that other stuff. 
uh, we're fighting against one another and we also are becoming our, we are destroying ourselves. When we destroy our enemy, we're destroying ourselves. And it brings me back to the whole, uh, that scripture, again, I'm an amateur, but the, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord will enter into the kingdom because when what you do to one another, you do, you do to Christ. So what you do to your enemy, you're doing to Christ. When you hate another person, you're actually hating Christ. Um, anyway, that, that's all I'll say about that. But I, I just, I just thought it was a brilliant, brilliant question. But the boots won't mean anything to them. We're the ones who dwelt in temporary shelters while we wandered the wilderness, not them. Everyone has wandered through the wilderness at some point. Mm. If all the nations came to celebrate in Jerusalem, there will not be enough room, not to buy. <laughs> I will not bore you with the calculations. Oh. I think <laughs> the Jerusalem as we know it now. Certainly not. But if Zachariah prophesied it, it will be fulfilled, right? Oh, okay. Oh my goodness. Uh, if I understood that on another level here, okay. See, Matthew made a good point. He said, well, not all the nations won't fit in Jerusalem, which means what? That Jerusalem is actually going to sp spread its boundaries. It's not going to be just with those invisible lines that we drew, but it's going to expand. It's, it's, it's like saying, like, how would everybody fit in the United States? It doesn't mean that everyone's coming to the United States, but rather that everyone will celebrate in their own country and therefore the United States will expand. That's just an ex a poor example. Okay. Was, or, or that's just an example. But what he's saying is that the, that that land or what, what the name of the land or what it represents will actually spread outwardly, not inwardly. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. Sounds impossible. I know a thing or two about prophecies that sound impossible. <laughs> Like the birth Anyone of her son, maybe? Other questions? <laughs> Hello, friends. Have a seat, please. Hello. Rabbi, uh, we may have a problem. I'm listening. Shmuel is here. Our Shmuel? Yeah. He was on a street corner today, raising the alarm about false prophecy. He needs you, Rabbi. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> yes, what he's been, I'm joking. I know he means me, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> so Shmuel is in Jerusalem, <laughs> talking about you. <laughs> That's even better. Better. Come on, yes. I think I'm going to see someone inside the city walls tomorrow. You may come if you like. I enjoy the company. And bring Matthew. It'll be good for him. He will quiet you with his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time, I will deal with all your oppressors, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. Any lame or outcasts out, out there in the live chat? Thank you, Sally, for the super chat and for the for that information. Thinking music. <laughs> That's brilliant. So this person we need to see, we get to meet him in the temple? No, actually the opposite. The Bethesda pool. <laughs> really? Here we go again. Gets stranger and stranger with you, doesn't it? I love it. <laughs> Why is it strange? 
because the history of the pool is pagan. I don't know much about the details. Um, mm. James usually knows that stuff more, but... Um... The pool used to be a shrine for the Phoenician god... Uh, Epim? Eshmoon. Esh? Esh Eshmoon, right, right. And then the Greeks and the Romans turned it into a place of worship for a healing cult of Aesculapius. Very good, Simon. How do you know this stuff? And James isn't the only one who reads. John, you should try it. <laughs> I do know about the pools, though. Every day the water steams and bubbles, and some people believe that it's stirred up by an angel who heals the first person who gets to the stirred water. I've read about this, that there are places on Earth where hot vapor steams up from the ground intermittently or makes water boil, and no one knows how. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say no one. Is that why we're going? You're going to tell us? Someday someone will figure it out and they'll tell everybody. But for now, we have a checkpoint to pass. Everyone behave yourselves. I like how he says somebody was going to figure it out someday and they'll tell everybody. So don't worry about it. <sighs> Man, could you imagine the pain you must feel to see that? His brothers and sisters just hung there. While others probably pass by and like, eh, it's like, it happens. Yeah, knowing one day he was gonna hang there. That's right, Lynn. The lighting in this is so beautiful. Could you look any more Roman? <laughs> I'd have asked you to meet me in the town square if I'd known you'd show up looking like a senator. I don't well, get paid to blend in. Wow. I'm Petronius, and you are the cohort Urbani? Atticus Aemilius. Your reputation precedes you. That is why I meet in alleys. You're a long way from home. Well, I go where the work is. And what work is here for you, Atticus? Your magistrate. Surprise. Something on Rufus's calendar puts you on a narrow road in the upper city just off the square. Valerian, it's uh, a restaurant. Rufus eats there every Saturday after Sabbath. Oh, lovely. But you've got a skilled assassin that wants to cancel his reservation. <laughs> it sounds like an Italian movie. Mix up the routine. He's inflexible about it. Good. That's good, that's good. Don't deviate. Do everything exactly as you'd planned. What? No, I can't risk his life. Go arrest the assassin. Do you know who the Zealots are? They're extremists. They reject the They're martyrs with a persecution complex. Arrest him, we'll only be adding fuel. Mm. Torture him, he gets a seat closer to his god. No. I want to kill him, Petronius, in the act. And then I want to watch his rat pals scurry their way back to their nest with a story they can't glorify, can't teach to the next class of marks. And do you know why? Wow. Why? Because we were just better than they were. That's why. Rome won. <laughs> you should be a general. Now, what fun would that be? Well, you're going to have to lay out your plan to the magistrate and his wife. She'll go for it before he does. Tendinari says she doesn't. I don't need the money. I don't need the money. Wow. These little games that we play, human beings. You heard all the different roads that he said they could have taken and the result, he already had the result at the end of what would what would happen if they take those paths, but he chose one where he was gonna leave them with nothing, no, nothing to, to brag about, nothing to celebrate, nothing, just nothing. It's brilliant. Jesse? I'm your brother, Simon. Do you remember me? Simon? 
Is your heavy brother? They told me I could find you here. Uncle Ram at Abbas' funeral. Oh, man. <laughs> you must be 30 years old. You're not Simon. I'm almost 40. I've been here 25 years. You make the pilgrimage every holiday? Yes. And you knew I was here. Our order forbids coming to the Bullet Batista. I'm your brother. This place is a pagan cult. Since when do cults bother you? <laughs> wow. I was embarrassed for you. Do you really believe in this? You try living with 38 years without like that work. Mm. And then tell me you wouldn't try anything and everything. Why wouldn't you at least come by once and carry me into the water? Oh. You could have tried. It is not in our God's nature to pit sick people against each other in a twisted game. I won't play it with you. Is it in our God's nature that his children would slit each other's throats? Oh! Have you no regard for the commandment that we shall not take another's life? And I wow! From the scriptures. There's a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. The land must be purged. Then what about our family? Hmm? Are we to be purged too? You left me. Well, you left all of us I left you his eyes. to save you. Do I look saved to you? Wow. <laughs> this is such a real conversation. I can't believe it. You are worse than you used to be. My legs are the same as when you left. I'm not talking about your legs. I'm talking about you. This godforsaken place has turned my strong brother into someone hopeless. And where should I hope in? After all these years? Mm. You and your murderous kind. Jesse. Mm. It's killed me to watch you suffer in your life. And I am sorry. I truly am. But that's not the only kind of pain. And you're not the only one who feels it. But you know what? I am at least doing something about mine. And I'm not sitting in a bed waiting to die. Have you said all you need to say? I have to be in the upper city. Oh, that's nearby. Less than a mile away. Might as well be a thousand miles to me. Wow. Whoever it is, don't do it. It's not worth it. If they catch you, they'll kill you. I am not afraid of death. I just wanted to say goodbye. Because I didn't do it right the first time. Mm -hmm. Wow. I do love you. And I love God. Goodbye, Jesse. By the time you read this, I will be halfway to the mountains to join the zealots of the fourth philosophy in the spirit of our great King David, who sang, zeal for your house has consumed me. I know it. I was a better writer then. And from Zephaniah, behold, at that time, I will deal with all your oppressors. I will save the lame and gather the outcast. I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. Jesse. When you stand on two feet, I will know the Messiah has come. <laughs> I will fight for the freedom of Zion in order to see that day. I stand by it. I stand by I it. Just... Must be nice. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, 
Ah, the suffering of some people. Why have we become so insensitive to the suffering of others? It's this individuality that's hey. Hey. taking us in the wrong path. What's the matter? The me. Me, 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 me. me. Nothing. Just focus. Our men are in position. When you see Rufus and his escorts pass the side street entrance, eh? Side street entrance. You'll have 30 seconds to get into position. Amen to that, Grandpa Sabi. <laughs> yeah, me and mine. Here we go. Someone who's not afraid to walk into a this pagan. Is what all the fuss is about. <laughs> An oversized mikveh. I have a feeling we haven't seen it all yet. This isn't just a meeting. <laughs> Do we need to be on the lookout? No. Just stay with me and watch. Stay with me and watch. Not think. Just watch. Stay with me and watch. Uh oh. Walked right past the Pharisees. Shalom. Me. <laughs> yes. Shalom. I have a question for you. For me. I don't have many answers, but I'm listening. <laughs> Do you want to be healed? Who are you? We'll get to that later. <laughs> but my question remains. Will you take me to the water? Oh, man. <laughs> Look, I'm having a really bad day. You've been having a bad day for a long time. So? <laughs> Sir, I have no one to help me into the water when it's stirred up. And when I do get close, the others step down in front of me. Because they put themselves first. Look at me. Look at me. That's not what I asked. I'm not asking you about who's helping you. Or who's not helping. <laughs> or who's getting in your way. I'm asking about you. I've tried. For a long time, I know. And you don't want false hope again, I understand. But this pool, it has nothing for you. It wow. means nothing. And you know it. But you're still here. 
Why? I don't know. You don't need this pool. You only need me. So, do you want to be healed? So let's go. <laughs> Get up. Pick up your mat. And walk. He's like, now let's go, because those people over there, they don't like, they don't like this. I'm free to walk, like he said. Don't forget your bed. Why does this matter? Because you're not coming back here. That life is over. <laughs> it changes now. Yo! It's Shabbat. What are you doing? Torah forbids carrying a mat on Shabbat? Not Torah, the oral tradition. Yes. Transporting objects from one domain to another violates Shabbat. The man who healed me. Do you me. not realize what just happened here? Why are you trying to make this about Shabbat? He said to me, take up your bed and walk. <laughs> who did? Who told you that? He did. I, I don't know. He didn't tell me his name. No. Of course not. He performs a magic trick and tells you a to magic commit a sin. magic trick. A false prophet. Wow. This will be reported. <laughs> Report whatever you want. Are you standing on the <laughs> He doesn't care. <laughs> He's like, what okay. do I care? I, I need to go find my brother. Wow. Okay. A lot to process. Yes. Tears. Um. A lot to process because, family, what's your pool? What are you waiting for to heal you? Well, you, you listen to, to other people. You're expecting maybe you're not religious. Maybe you're expecting some charm to save you, some crystal, some practice, some prayer even maybe even that's going to heal you. But you don't need all of that. He's saying all you need is him. Now, I'm not in any way saying that when you just accept him, healing will happen, but it can. I mean, there's, there's nothing really that's limiting that. There's nothing that's stopping that. And I love this conversation. He said, you know, you've held on for so long. Why? You know that there's nothing. So there's something about it that he knew that the pool was not going to heal him. Nothing, there was nothing in that pool for him. And yet he kept saying, like, I try, I've been trying, but everybody keeps beating me to it. And, and, they cut right in front of, of me and he's saying, don't blame others. You don't have to blame others. You don't have to say that the reason why you haven't healed is this or that the other. The question is simply, do you want to, do you want to heal? And if the answer is yes, then stand up. You know, it's funny. You got three, three, three people on here. They had 33 people and three likes uh, from Facebook. Thank you so much. Um, Okay, so here we go. <laughs> and that changed again, but it's fine. Familia, you all are so beautiful. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for sharing these with me, um, this story with me. We're not done yet, but if you have enjoyed watching this with me so far, uh, please, please hit that like button. Let YouTube know that you're enjoying this, this uh, moment, this time with us so that it can share it with more people and we can have more, more people join this beautiful conversation. All right, so we're going to continue here. So, so far we have... The brother, he read, Jesse read to him the letter he said to him. And he says, "The mo I can't wait to see you walk again. And that day that you walk, I will know that the Messiah has returned. And so 
the tuck, the, the tuck is clicking. The, t- <laughs> the tuck is clicking, everybody. And um, Jesse now must go to his brother, right? Before he commits this horrible act. So here we go. It's my first time. <laughs> I'm going to the upper city. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh man. It's my first time, pobrecito. <laughs> and, and he says it excitingly too. He's like. <laughs> but it probably meant nothing to the other guy because he didn't know, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You look radiant tonight, darling. Don't push it. All these moving parts. The game of ball? You think I don't know the difference between ball and cross? Oh, I curse you! Your family! Your children! And your children's children! And when they have children, I curse them too! <laughs> you are impatient, huh? Scam artist! I will destroy you and your family and your children! The distraction was supposed to be for the guy he was supposed to murder, but he's the one that's distracted. (laughs) Oh, the music is brilliant. drumming Letting me see that. Thank you for being with me. Well, the Pharisees were pretty upset. That was almost as much fun to watch as the miracle. This week should be fun, huh? I do have a question, Rabbi. Yes, Matthew? Why him? Waiting 30 more minutes wouldn't have mattered to that man. Why did you do this on Shabbat? Oh, okay. Sometimes you gotta stir up the water. (laughs) Yes. Sometimes you have to stir up the water a little bit. (laughs) 
Wow. All right, we're gonna let the credits play because they all do deserve credit for this beautiful, beautiful work that they did. Uh, beautiful direction, beautiful acting, great cinematography, excellent lighting. Everything about this story is just brilliant, brilliant, brilliant work. Um, so here we have Jesus who healed someone. Um, here we have Jesus who healed someone on Shabbat, which I guess is not, not legal. He shouldn't be doing that stuff, right? Um, and then he got the other gentleman in trouble for, for carrying something in Shabbat. I guess you're not supposed to carry anything either. Um, and it's he didn't really care he didn't he didn't care that he was going to be reported he's like i'm walking man <laughs> like like that's that's uh that uh that's amazing and i don't care you know find me do whatever you have to do but i'm walking right and so of course the pharisees don't like this because it's written and they are the ones that are they have to be you know by the by the book and you can't be doing this you can't be doing that and Matthew asks a very le legitimate question. Why? Why did you, you know, it could have waited 13 more minutes. If he would have just waited a tiny little bit longer, then he wouldn't have broken the law, right? He wouldn't have broken the law and he wouldn't have made the gentleman break a law as well. And Jesus said, sometimes you just got to stir the water, which meant that the timing was everything, which, which points to to our, which if we could look at our lives today, Familia, when we see something happen, or when we hear a story of something happening in someone's life that doesn't quite fit your your picture of of what God can or cannot do, um, there is a reason why God does these things. It it may not match what is written, it may go against what is written, but it's not up to you to question what God can do in a person's life. That He may talk to someone, that He may heal someone, and maybe He didn't heal someone in your life who you you, you cared for, and so that may may bring up some emotions about why did you save this person and not that person that I loved, and who are we to really question God's motives? Right? Everything is everything. It's funny because we're. Uh, everything seems to be connected. There is no, like for me, separation is an illusion. There is nothing that is that is working outside of, of God. Everything is happening as it should be happening. Now, some of you may take that to mean that, that I believe that everything is predestined. I'm not sure about that. So don't quote me on that. Okay. But I do know that everything, everything happens for its, its reasons. And it's not my, my, job to question what that reason is but to give thanks when it when when it happens um we uh i love the, i love this this episode it was a it was a brilliant episode to see that that healing happen in the time that it happened was brilliant because he not only not only did he heal someone which is good he, uh who, who had hope right he healed him and he wasn't a he wasn't a believer in him per se Right, because he was well, he was a believer, but he was going to pagan rituals to try to save himself, and yet that didn't stop Jesus from doing it. Uh, he did it in front of a Pharisee. He he broke a law. He made him break a law, but he saved his brother from going to jail or being killed, and he saved that Roman um, person from being killed as well. Um, and that was the reason, but a lot of people won't understand that. That's why Matthew's question was like, why didn't you just wait? What if you would have waited? Somebody would have died. Somebody would have gone to jail and uh, the healing. Yeah, sure. He could have healed them, but he would have lost these other, this other, these other two people. Right. So anyway, his timing is perfect. Right. And it, as it says with God, all things are possible, not with God. Some things are possible or with God. Some things are possible as long as they're written in the Bible or with God. Some things are possible as long as you believe, but if you don't believe they're not possible, then it's, it's with God. All things are possible. All of it, all of these things are possible. So I absolutely love this episode. Uh, thank you so much for joining, for joining us on, on, on today's episode. Thank you so much for those of you who, who um, added some super chats to the, to the chat. Thank you for do your donations. Um, th thank you for, the new yeah, thank you for new members as well. So those of you who joined the memberships uh, to help support this channel. Thank you. Appreciate it so, so much. Um, congratulations to those of you who have achieved something this week. Um, and also thank you for joining us for the for people who joined us for the first time. I saw some people who were like, this is the first time on your live chat. Thank you for joining us. We want to invite you all to join us on discord. It's our, our prayer server. For those of you who need prayer, who want to request prayer, we have people all over the world, all around the world who 
can see that prayer and will offer a prayer from, from you to, to make that prayer a, a lot stronger. Uh, we have a, a section with, uh, with uh, reports so that you could see how some of the prayers have been answered. Um, for those of you who want to join, that's not a place for Discord, even though it's called Discord. It's not a place for Discord. We're not arguing or discussing uh, what's real, what's not real, whether we believe or not believe. It's a place of peace. It's a place where we're, we're, we're establishing, excuse me, shalom, and we're bringing, we're bringing peace to everyone who needs it. And we're bringing um, a, a place of kindness to those of you who need it. And we know, we know that there's a lot of people who are hurting right now. Um, and we just wanted to offer a place where you can feel comfortable and welcome and safe to, to um, share your life with, with others and to celebrate with others and to also let us know when you're going through something, when you're suffering something, so that you can receive the support that you, that you need uh, from other people um, specifically. So we, we'd like to ask you to join us. We have, Erika just posted the link and there's also the link to it in, our, in the description down below. Um, if anybody has any questions and then also we have our good friend uh, Matt who has a like a discussion about what we saw here today I think he has it on Thursdays but if you join us you'll be able to see the 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 announcement for that um, thank you so much for for those of you who asked for prayer and for those of you who offered prayer so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a quick look at some of your comments here um, uh, let's see. So Tommy, Tommy Wright says, Leonardo in Christ, he directs our steps. Just like you said, he sets it all up to make a way where there is no way. Exactly. That's beautiful. I like that. Making a way where there is no way. Uh, Leo, could you, you one day share your testimony? Would love to hear your te testimony, bro. Absolutely. I'll see if I could share a more uh, condensed version because it's kind of spread all out, all out through my channel. Um, so yes, absolutely, I, I will. Um, let's see. One a week. Yes, I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stick for one a week from from moving forward. So on Thursday, if you want to talk about it, you could talk about it Thursday. Um, I'm gonna get the next episode on next Monday. Uh, this week, I have a lot of a lot of reaction videos to catch up on. So we're gonna see a little bit a little bit more uh, reaction uh, videos. So if you made a cash app donation. And a suggestion for a song. I'm getting to it. Cash App or Venmo or PayPal was the other. Uh, I'm getting to it. So I appreciate your patience. Thank you. Um, let's see. Connie Grace says, I love your perspective and reactions. Thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat as well. Um, I appreciate you so much. For those of you who made a super chat uh, donation or donations anywhere else, uh, um, I want to thank you so much. And please know that at the end of my day, I give thanks for all the blessings that, that arrived through the channel. And I I make a prayer that all your blessings that you've offered to this channel, that they be multiplied in your direction and that God continues to bless you and your family with, with more. Um, and I do appreciate it so, so much. Um, let's see. I've had lots of timing happen in my life. God sees everything and we may not understand, but I do know that what we, that when I've gone on my own understanding, lots, lots of manure. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, when, when we say, when we say that on my own understanding, please understand, Familia, that there are different levels of understanding. One level is the mental understanding. That is the learning, the reading, and then the re-presentation, the reinterpretation that your mind makes to you, the one who's observing, the one who's studying, the one who's seeking. Your mind interprets what is read, right? And so then it becomes your own understanding. However, there's another deeper understanding that's more of a remembering that when you read something, it feels absolutely true in all of your nature. The mind could doubt, the mind may have a question, but if you set the mind aside for a moment, okay, or some people say empty your mind, that, that term scares some people. And we could talk about that in the future, but, but there's a knowing, something that is, that, that is reflected in your spirit, that, that the truth recognizes truth. And, and then there's that profound understanding. And every one of you has that understanding. The problem is that there's too many voices that are directing you and saying things like, hey, don't listen to that pastor because that pastor is a heretic. He doesn't know as much as I do. Or, hey, don't listen to that. Uh, you know, don't listen to this church because that church, they have people who believe X, A, B, C, or they use, you know, this thing, or they believe this uh, nonsense or whatever and pinning each other against against one another and that's not what christ did christ said love god 
and with all your heart, mind, and soul, and then love one another as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. And that's not very loving to your loving to your neighbor. Um, we should be more like what Christ said, you know, he, when, when he told Simon and all of them, he said, just f come with me and watch and watch me or something like, like, like that. Uh, um, watch, watch what I'm doing. And so that's one way of, of being able to, to know that you are following um, what, it, what is true. Um, but the question that I want you all to answer in the comment section below, and I'll, I'll try to post it in a bit, is, uh, is what is your pool? What is your pool? What is the thing that you're hanging on to for healing? When you were a child, something happened to you and you're saying, if my mother only loved me more, maybe I wouldn't be the way that I am. Scared of the world, scared of this, scared of that. Or if, you know, if maybe if my grandfather might, didn't pass away when I was 16, I would be more, more, you know, assertive or I would be more loving to more people. Or if only this happened, what is that pool for you? What are you waiting for that you're expecting to heal you from your past or heal you from your, from your emotional or mental trauma or, or mental or emotional pain? What is it for you? Because whatever it is, trust me, you don't need it. You know, you don't need that person to come and say, hey, I'm sorry that I treated you so poorly before in the past. Or someone to say, hey, I'm sorry that I cheated on you. Or, hey, I'm sorry that I lied to you. and Or I'm sorry that I asked to borrow money and I didn't give it back to you. Or I'm sorry. If you're expecting someone else to apologize for you, give it up. It's not, it's not going to happen. And even if it does happen, that probably isn't going to be enough for you to heal. You deserve healing. You deserve to be healed, not in the future, now you deserve it now and the only thing that you need is to walk with the great spirit walk with god walk with jesus walk with christ walk with the father walk with the holy spirit however you what, whatever however you want that to be interpreted for you walk with him period period with a t at the end um that's all you you need because in that there's a profound healing a deep feeling that that helps you see things as they really actually are not as the way your mind makes them to see because it's the mind that's hurt sometimes or it's the heart that's hurt sometimes and it repeats those scenarios those events it replays them in your head it replays that that your mother's voice or your um, your dad's voice or your grandpa's voice or that ex-partner's voice and all the harsh things it said it repeats it because it wants healing it's seeking to be healed but you won't it won't let you because it's expecting something to heal it and what you need to do is let it go uh uh and, and, and it's hard if you're trying to do that completely, entirely on your own. So you do have to surrender. You have to surrender both your mind and your heart over to, to him to be healed. That's the, that's the only way. So let me know in the, law, in the comment section down below, what is your pool? What are you waiting for? And, and, and then imagine, if you will, if you want to do an exercise, sit there quietly, imagine what that thing is that you're expecting and practice uh, just what Christ did here is imagine him, um, approaching you. I hate to use this word imagine because it's not really about using your imagination because that's again, employing the mind to do something, but really feel him coming to you and asking you, do you want to be healed? See it. Do you want to be healed? And watch how your mind goes. Yeah, I would heal. But if that person only comes over here and says they're sorry, or every time I try to, to heal, someone reminds me of this person or somebody reminds me of this other thing where every time I'm coming close to healing, my family does ABC to me or does XYZ or the world treats me this way. And every time... Just like he he did in this in this video, just just like Jesse did, right? The excuses that the mind and the heart comes up with, and let that go, and see that Christ is actually asking you to that you don't need any of that. That all you need is Him, and if, and if you want to heal, then get up, get up, and walk away from what you used to be. I love how Simon stepped up and said and said he said, "Is this really necessary that I take this with me?" He said, "Yes, it's necessary because you're not coming back to this place. You're not going to be who you were anymore. You're a new person now. You're a completely different person. So stop treating yourself like you used to be and treat yourself like you deserve to be and who you are now in him, not without him, not outside of him, but who you are in him. Don't let anybody else, not even me, familia, not even me tell you who you are. You know who you are. Who you are is 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 written the, is written in your heart. It's written inside of you, not even in your heart, in your being. It's written in your being. You've never, ever read your own letter. You're so busy reading other people's letters. You're so busy reading what other people have to say about you. You need to learn to read your own letter. Your own letter. You have your own purpose. You have your own being, your own spark, your own life. That, which is tricky to say because I don't believe that your life is your own. There is only but one life that exists and permeates this entire universe. And that life is the life of God.
period. But we live in, an, in, in a world in this phenomenon where there's a me that exists outside of that. And as long as there's a me that lives outside of him, then forever I will fall. Forever I will make poor decisions. Forever I will be uh, drawn by by temptation. Forever I will listen to the urges of my of my body. Forever I will listen to the desires of my mind for the comfort that it seeks, for the comfort that my heart seeks, for the emotion. I, I will seek temporary band aids to heal me from my emotional pain by turning to drugs, by turning to alcohol, by turning to sex, by turning to all of these things that will never permanently heal the pain that I have in my in, in my being. There's no such thing as, for me, there's no such thing as me anymore. There is no such thing as me. There's no such thing as other, which means that I don't even see you as other. I see you as me. This is how I can love you as myself, because I learned to see myself in you. And then if, if, if God is in me, and I learn to see myself in you, then I see God in you, and I treat you as that. I bring out Christ in you. I, I, I learned I, I learned to teach you not to that that the knock that you hear at the door isn't Christ trying to come in. I try to remind you that love is already inside you and you need to open that door and let it out. Let it out. Learn to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Learn to love yourself with all your mind, heart, and soul, and learn to love others with all your mind, heart, and soul, and realize that there is no such thing as separation. There's nothing really that's separating you from me. It's an illusion. We are one in him and in him alone. And I just, I'll leave you with that message. Uh, do you think if Jesus came back today, we would treat him like the Pharisees did and we wouldn't recognize him? I believe so. I think that he would, we would just say that he's a heretic, that he's spreading false, false falseness. Um, I think people are, here, here's, here's, I'll leave you with this. People, there's a difference between loving God and what I said right now about the mind. There's a difference between loving God with all of your being and under and, and the understanding, the deep understanding that comes with that. And you could see it in how we treat one another. Because if I really love God with all of my heart, all of my soul, there is nothing that I will do to harm you. There's nothing that I will do to treat you or to bring you down. In, in fact, I will raise you, not to worship you, but I will lift you up so you can be closer to him, right? But the, the bad thing or the difference here is this, that people create an image of Christ and they worship that. Let me say it again. People make an image of God and they worship that. And this is why they turn to the Bible and I'm not saying I'm not mocking this, okay? I'm not mocking this. I'm not making fun of it. I'm just telling you something that's true, and you could see it for yourself, or you maybe see it see it in others. They turn to the Bible to see what's true, and they they're just using the Bible to support that idea. And they'll see they'll see miracles. They'll hear stories of people who who were saved in the most bizarre ways, and if it doesn't fit that image, they'll reject them. They'll turn them away. They'll tell them that they're being heretics, that they're being false prophets, that they're liars, that they don't have the right story, that they don't have the right context, that God cannot do that and he won't do that because it contradicts what God is. And yet we don't know what God's limits are. We have no way of saying what God's limits are. So what we do is we turn to the Bible, we read the Bible, and if it, and if it supports this image, then we accept it. If it doesn't support this image, we reject it. And that's not loving God at all. That is loving your idea of God. And we have to be very careful because that's where we, we get people who are afraid of demons and, and are afraid of welcoming demons and like, oh, I don't want to empty my mind. I don't want to work on my mind because emptying it means that I'm inviting uh, demons or I'm inviting the evil that comes in. No, if you really love God with all of your heart, if all your mind, heart and soul and it, it, it permeates your entire being, then your body will be full of light and there is no darkness that you will fear. No darkness. The person who's afraid of evil entering into them are the people that don't have faith in God. That's the truth. You don't even have faith in God. Now, if you had that faith, if you walked with him, then you will fear no evil. You, you will fear nothing. You could walk into darkness. I'm not saying tempt darkness, but you could walk into darkness and not be afraid because he is with you. Because he is with you. If you if you imagine that he's walking beside you, then you're if he's on to your right, you might be afraid of what's into your left. Or if he's on your left, you might be afraid of what's on your right. But no, we're talking about this. 
this. He and you and you and him. And since darkness can't touch him, nothing can touch you because you're in him. But if your mind is in the world, then there's a disconnect. There's a detachment there because you believe that you are separate, because you believe that you are a believer under him and not with him, because you believe that you uh, are something separate because you're fallen, because you're fallen nature, then this has got you. Well, yeah. When are you going to merge? Someone said to me that you, you, you're a sinner um, redeemed by, no, never mind. I'm not going to go there because I, I don't remember the exact words and I don't want to, I don't want to phrase it incorrectly here. But my point is to, to merge with that, to become one. And I think that if Christ were to come here today, he, he would definitely be murdered all over again because we're, we're, we don't know how to handle that because he's not going to fit our image. He's not going to fit the image that we have. Um, in fact, we'll ignore signs as well. We'll, we'll, we'll be so afraid we'll turn to our pastors and certain pastors will say, nope, that's, that's, that's false because these are the signs. And they're like, but the signs are there. Nope, they're not there. The, you know, the, the devil can trick you. He can also do these signs. And it's like, how do you know? How do you know? How do you know? So, so the way that you know is by, by knowing, not knowing, by knowing, which means giving up, giving up what you know here and sinking down into what, you, what is already known here, what's been known for, for, for millennia, for since the beginning of time, that's been known here. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll just leave it at that. But thank you so much, everyone, for, for joining us here. Um, I appreciate all of your time, all your comments. I do, I do watch this again so I can see the comments because I, I love reading your comments. You guys share so much, um, so much information that I may have missed and it paints a bigger picture for me. But thank you so much for, for reflecting the love of God, for being vessels of the love of God and for spreading the love of God. So if you're with me, Familia, if you're with the channel, if you're with La Familia and you'd like to join us, join us on Discord. You can also become a member to help support the channel in that way or just join us on the live chat. That's all. That's, that's all that matters. Join us on the live chat, interact with one another and help us spread love. That's all.